going, wait a second, this Tristana should be behind this Kog'Maw, but the level advantage also going the way of the Tristana, which we talk about levels on like solo laners and stuff where it makes a difference. AD carries like Tristana, it matters a whole bunch because her range increases from her passive. So the faster you accelerate into those middle or later parts of the game with those levels, the better your team fighting is and the easier it is to play those team fights from a safe position. A lot of credits of FlyQuest just for Picking again a simple comp, but then just playing very calmly throughout that game. We do often criticize them for not being able to close out games, but they kind of did that relatively methodically despite some hiccups. So we'll see what changes here in the draft. LeBlanc and Thresh ban from Liquid being joined by Elise and Galio on the FlyQuest side. Zach is the final ban there for Liquid on blue side. So kind of a telltale sign there potentially mm. that Dardoch just really doesn't want to play with or against this champion. Yeah, because you could first pick it here, but that means Callista is up. They may give that to Piglet. Uh, Caitlyn hasn't been banned either, so might be getting one of those. I haven't seen her in a little while, so yeah. we have to see exactly what FlyQuest want here with this final ban. Nah, once again, will be taken away from Lolo, so mm -hmm. kind of setting up that tank pick again, but Liquid, maybe this time it's their turn to first pick that Maokai. Yeah, so Maokai, Callista, Caitlyn all on the table here, and you have to think 280 carries, one big tank, and they're going to take the Callista over the Caitlyn or the Maokai here. I think. Over the Maokai is the one that kind of potentially rings alarm bells for me, but we'll see what FlyQuest want to do. I think Ball's pretty much required to take this champion. Super solid, he played very well on it. Certainly uh, one of the strongest champions on the patch. So that's an easy first pick for FlyQuest. I guess the next question is, what do you do now? And do FlyQuest even want Caitlyn as the draft kind of moves forward? We'll have to see. Probably not in this pick. Maybe yeah. just taking something like the Thresh away. Yeah, I love Lemonation's expression there with the notebook. He It looked like, an, of course we're taking that. It was like, what are you talking about? That was, waving it at him. Oh yeah, it was like, of course we're taking Caitlyn here. What? What? <laughs> it's funny too, because like they don't have to take it here because of the fact that the Callista's already locked in. There's no threat of this champion being taken away at all, but there is a chance that Team Liquid pick a mid laner here, and then you have to pick Caitlyn in your third pick, or you risk getting it banned away. But you'd love to pick your mid laner there and try to match if that was the case. Yep, yeah, does look like Bardock might be back on J4. Lolo again can, can play it as well. And looks like Mickey will go back to Orianna potentially. Yeah, and this is why you don't or you don't lay, leave Caitlyn up for later because then you'd have to pick her here. Yep. And then you'd be like, okay, it's between that or maybe Talia here to try and match the Orianna or even Corky right now. Go back Kai, to Corky. Feels like the one he would go to. Maybe Lucian. Double mark to Maokai. Pretty good core to any team comp here. Hi, already played the match. I was like, yeah, this guy's pretty good, yeah. but I felt fine. Yeah. I'm going to just take the pick again here. Certainly Corky, a very stable pick. Kai is such an interesting uh, mid laner to me because the types of champions that he plays and favors will always kind of change the whole damage palette of the team. Because there was a time when he would play the mid um, Zed, he would play the Assassins, and would be like, well, we need to play Rumble Balls, so like yep. you're playing this champion. <laughs> And now he's like, okay, well, I'll help out so we don't have full AD. We'll go with Corky here to kind of make sure that we can play whatever we want in the top lane as a flex pick here, because they could still pick a physical damage dealer in the top lane. Uh, Shen is still on the table, has that mixed damage as well. And we'll see what happens here as the Bard gets banned away from... <laughs> I, I call him Matt Life, but he's also Bard Romance, so I feel like he's got two one tricks. <laughs> I mean, certainly loves both those champions, so I think one of those is a smart takeaway. Morgana banned by Liquid, didn't like that. Lemonation was yeah. very accurate with his bindings, actually. That was like the, the makeshift, get Ardent Sensor in this build. Let's get Stoneborn packed. Let's make sure that it's in here. That was ridiculous, but it, it helps out because it gives so much stats to the AD carry. And when you're running double marksman, on top of that, it just looks even better. Well, there's a Braum for FlyQuest. Liquid, one more ban to go. Double support burns there for FlyQuest. Will Liquid respond in kind, or do they have something else to think about here? And again, if another support does get banned, I didn't even notice Thresh already got banned. Uh -huh. That would explain why I didn't see him anywhere. Yeah, and so you're kind of going down those tier lists. Janna still on the table. Lulu still on the table. There's still a lot here that you can work with, and Alistar is another one of those playmakers that you can go for. Moo, there it is for Lemonation. Seen this already on this stream. In fact, Smoothie had a good game one on the cow. That's like the most unenthusiastic Moo ever. Oh, don't worry, it'll, <laughs> it'll ramp up. Hey, if he's got if he's got the skin, if he's got the Moo cow. I'm, then I'm down. <laughs> see here. Ah, hooks. We'll see if Matt Life goes for it again. No threat. All right. Take a different hook champion. That's Blitzcrank. Uh, but I feel like Blitzcrank, historically into Alistar, has been like, oh, no, I did my job. I did your job for you. I brought you to me. And now he gets to headbutt on the spot. He gets to pulverize on the spot, headbutt the AD carry. 
So really, the Blitzcrank into the Alistar is going to be rough. Some juicy targets though, potentially. Yeah, they're looking for the... And there's a Nautilus! Whoa. Hello! Yeah, they're looking for the Ballista combo, where they can pull the, uh, the ah, person all yes. the way back into the team. But the Nautilus for top lane? Um, it's interesting. It's an old Lorlo pick. Like, we're going yeah. way back here. I mean, this is such an old tank matchup in general. Yeah, and even though you can't stack Doran's rings anymore, uh, to get that mana back. His wave clear took a big hit. The mana cost on his Riptide went up. And so now you can pick whatever you want there. Yeah, it was like, the Shen is off the table. Nar's off the table. You could pick even Camille would be fine. But Renekton. So, looks like they're going to go with Renekton for balls in the top lane. And again, credit to Flyquest for being flexible here. I personally did not expect Moon to take Maokai, but... Again, like we're showing that if we're willing to pick it, we should be willing to play it in two positions. And Balls will get Renekton and get a nice counter pick for himself there in the top lane. So it is Nautilus's first appearance in the NLCS yeah. the split. We'll see how he fares. And that's how much he's been kind of dead since the time where it was Nautilus <laughs> Poppy every game. Right? You think oh, back of Nautilus. split, two splits ago, it was just all about Nautilus all the time and Poppy. Did he get buffed recently? Kind of. I think you got some very small change. I mean, like 25 plus champions got changed on this patch. So I think there was something going on there, but it, it would not be major if anything else. Certainly might feel a little bit better to play, but going to be rough with the aggressive champion that Balls is bringing to battle. Yeah, he ended up getting changes to his Dreadline base damage that got increased by 20 at or 20 to 15, depending on the rank, and then mm -hmm. scales to the same. But Q is not something you max early on at all. So the base damage increase of 20 is good. And then his ultimate cooldown got reduced by 20 seconds early. So his early game playmaking is better and his early damage is slightly better. So not, not really any of his big abilities like Riptide or anything like that, but still, the being able to make plays more frequently mm -hmm. is what tanks have been moving towards frequently. Yep, I think landing phase is just the thing we have to look for here. You already said it, Riptide got nerfed. Triple Dorans is out pretty much as far as item choices go. So could be a struggle there in the top side. We'll have to see, but there was a lot of action early with Dardoch and his Jarvan. We'll see what happens here in a different type of jungle matchup. Yeah, and two tanks kind of yeah, going to battle in the jungle. And FlyQuest winning here would be uh, fantastic for them because it would give them a matchup over Team Liquid, who has Dignitas left to play. He's one of those teams near the top that's taking teams to three games constantly and is a playoff team, whether fourth or fifth. And FlyQuest, they play Phoenix 1, who is also right below them in the standings. And if Phoenix 1-1, one, one, they would be 1-1 one one in terms of their head-to-head. -head. But then FlyQuest would have a 2-0 uh, over Team Liquid. So they would be in a really good spot in terms of head-to-head -head tiebreaker if they win this match. And again, we talk about it. For the last few weeks, really, for FlyQuest, just look and hold on to those points and get a shot towards Worlds in the Gauntlet as Dardoch takes a decent amount of damage there and does get his recall cancelled by High. So, decent early start there for Fly. And again, not too much happening here at level one as Dardoch is going to, I think, I assume, complete that recall and run back down towards, I'm guessing, Red Buff. But we'll see. Looks like Moon's starting on the blue side of his jungle this time. Yeah, and I wonder what Dardoch's going to go for here in terms of his jungle route, because he has the Hunter's Machete, which kind of leads me to believe that he's going to go for single target camps first. He may go buff to buff to Gromp. Uh, so Damasi and Standard will help you so much in your clear. I've seen Jarvins do it either way, where you go for either the Machete if you're going to go for single targets like the buffs, and then the Gromp, and then you go for the Hunter's Talisman if you're going for a full clear, or you're going for Raptors somewhere in your build. Because now this is just the start where he's getting a heavy leash on his red buff here. And then it looks like level 2 gank. All right. So he's going for it fast. They're going to try to go to level 2 gank here. Uh, but this is already warded by FlyQuest. Yep. So this would have to be a really aggressive push by uh, by Matt simultaneously. And they're going to see it immediately. And Dardoch's like, oh, well, he's going to check blue. And that's already gone. That's where he started. Excellent read there from Fly. Overall, Dardoch had pretty much Moon's number, I'd say, in the first 10 to 15 minutes of the last game. But this time, he will lose out. Kind of guessing wrong there in that spot. And Moon's already over to his other side of the jungle, ready to go as Lamination does get a pull down onto Matt, trading some damage back and forth. Yeah, and what happened there was, I well, see what level 2's come out, Lamination not being aggressive, okay. Matt, Ooh, Matt takes so much damage already. Oh, oh. No, he's going to land onto Turtle. Gets the knock up, Ren there from Piglet for a little bit of extra damage. Yeah, looks like he got the reset on Ren as well, so just kind of tossing those spears back and forth. One more on Ren, there he goes. He's doing a lot of chip damage here by throwing them in the minion and getting the reset. So he's trading and then farming. 
trying to get those rend resets. But now look at Ooh, Ignite Matt. already onto Lemon, actually getting very aggressive here. Matt just needs to find the hook. Lemon does have his fight, burns it. Ooh. Heal burnt by Turtle as well. Someone's oh, gonna use here, but again, keep going down. Not enough there onto Lemon, though. Still has his Ignite also, and High is roaming yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. High is coming down. If they continue to push this wave, oh no, they're actually gonna kind of teeter back and forth. There's not enough time there. But yes, Moon was tracking Dardock on the top side of the jungle, and the leash at the beginning for Dardock was very heavy, and it kind of gave away where Dardock started, and then they warded the bottom side, suspecting that level two, which is something that Moon has done on Darwin multiple times, is level two gank. Uh, so they sniffed that out, but also Moon didn't get a leash. Me Moon used his uh, saplings on the blue buff, and then was able to just keep going. So Dardock invading and putting the ward down was actually big to figure out where Moon was on the map. So you could go for trades as a bottom lane and be aggressive without thinking the Maokai is going to pad there later. And now here's a room from Matt. Hi, already tried to get down there to assist his team, so Matt's going to respond by trying to find a hook here, but looks like he'll have to back away. And already had a reset for TL's duo here. Piglet going to return to lane with a call and a refillable potion. Yeah. So a lot of early lane items here for Piglet. Yeah, the call is an interesting one because normally you, you like playing Callista because he's got uh, kind of easy build paths into Blade of the Rune King. Daggers everywhere. You can just pick those up. Not mess them up with long swords this time. <laughs> daggers, <laughs> real daggers. Not like last time. Uh, there is a Maokai in that bush. There is. We know that. If Does Lola know if that? If the empowered stun from Balls comes out, because he's saving a lot of his fury here. Doesn't get it, though. He's about to have it again, and Lola's going to feel safe walking up. There you go, empowered stun. Here yep. comes Maokai. Flash. Perfect Knock bait. From the arcane, and there's Lolo. First blood over to Moon. Perfect bait there. Balls went through, came back, blew a lot of his fury. It's like, why is he charging all of it? And then didn't have the red bar just yet. Autos once, uses the W to have the empowered stun, which is enough for Moon to just flash grasping root and get or twisted advance and get himself in there. Yeah. There's so many root abilities in our. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. We got the, we got the we, long sword thing covered. And we changed the names of abilities. <laughs> why is it nature's grasp? <laughs> I mean, uh. don't think it's a very vengeful maelstrom anymore. So that's probably why. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, yeah, Balls played that so well with the auto attack into the half fury bar. And then Moon, just pretty simple pickup there. And this yeah. is another reason why we haven't been seeing the Nautilus for a while. It does have his flash, which is good for Lolo. Didn't have a chance to use it before. As Turtle ooh, <laughs> gets out from under Pants, little robot grab. Certainly a lot of attention being put here into that bot side. Dardock was there with the Blitz. Hoping to make something happen. Piglet does have a CS lead as a result, but Southern Elimination will be very good in the mid to late game if they can just withstand the pressure in this lane. And it has been this bottom lane that was kind of the breaking point. Piglet had such a great early lead with the early turret gold and first turret last game. And then Wild Turtle just farmed up, and it was the big difference maker there in my mind because... Wild Turtle doesn't get that far ahead. When TL can keep their foot on the gas, then you don't have that Tristana popping off and you have such a large gold lead that it doesn't really matter at what point the Tristana is at, but they weren't able to kind of farm up to that point. And so putting pressure bot, trying to keep somebody down early, and you'll see if it makes the difference because this is late game calls, late game allocation of resources so far in the series. Yeah, Flagrest already up 700 gold actually just from that first blood and some farming alone. So doing well here. Balls kind of building up pressure in that land. Hook, oh, lands very nice on a turtle. He's under the turret as well. Elimination trying to defend, but Matt, this needs a little bit more. Turtle trying to get himself away. He does have his heal up, but Piglet chasing down maybe another target. High though has roamed down here. They're baiting in for high. Looking for that wraparound. He's going to be able to find it onto Piglet as the kill, but they I think Matt might dead. be the better target. He's a little low. Does burn the flash out of the way. Needs a bit of as the heal. Does get burned. Oh. Rookie land. Elimination actually gets the kill with Ignite onto the Blitz crank. And now Piglet with no sums trying to get aggressive. And here comes Mickey. Mickey, is he fine? Let's see. He's, He's level got six. Shockwave. Oh, big shockwave flash finds two. That's good. Mickey and Piglet get a team up. Elimination goes down. Turtle should be able to fall here to Mickey on the other side. One more auto needed, but he's not going to find a Piglet instead. Grabbing the double kills, he takes down high. Yeah, and while Turtle barely gets out, another auto attack would have been the difference there. But Mickey shows up right in time and gets those counter kills and makes it a two for one trade. Really nice there. Highly impactful shockwave there for Mickey, who's also winning in CS in the mid lane pretty handily <laughs> high. He was the first to get there, but it is going to cost him. Exactly. So what happens here is Mickey ends up losing a little CS, but that's going to go over to Dardock in the mid lane. And then the bottom lane is actually nobody's going to be able to pick that up. And this was such a good hook from Matt. The follow into Wild Turtle, who now has to blow his flash very early on here. And he over chase. 
You can see Mickey's trying to reclaim the mid and shove it out. He pushes it all the way to the turret. High will lose those resources. And then Matt, oh, just dies barely to the ignite there from Lemonation. And now Mickey's going to show up and get that shockwave. This is exactly what you want. If somebody who understands that mid priority and how and when to roam goes in, High avoids the three man shockwave. And then Mickey able to kind of get the damage there on Lemonation. Pick him up. And then Wild Turtle. Oh, getting out. Now they know the flashes aren't there. Oh! oh. Lemonation also going to land the pole, but Dardox here. Matt also so low. Lemon with a good flash gets out from under the hook. Yeah, you throw Matt in. Uh, help? Is it going in? The Alistar is like, thank you very much. I'm going to just punt him into my turret. And no follow up trap there from Wild Turtle, though, but. That's seriously enough to get Matt kind of out of the lane. He's got to go for those uh, honey fruit. And Lorlo's here. And he's going to have to walk back top. Uh, okay. Ooh, Moon going to burn the ultimate. Oh, oh boy. There. They saw him the whole time. Headbutt back. Lorlo should be able to get out. Does have his flash. He's going to be forced to use it as high packages over to the bot lane. That's a free lane for balls, though, in the top yeah. side. And so now you see this gigantic advantage top lane. He doesn't have TP to get back here. Nobody's even close to the side of the map. It would have to be Mickey, who kind of rotates up here to get something. But he's shoving mid. And that farm on top is just going to go to waste. And you'll see a 35 CS advantage for balls in the top side. Might even be this turret as well, actually, as the wave yeah, that's so. back in. Had a big cannon wave to start with, so Balls should be able to get solo first turret gold here on Renekton. Unbelievable advantage here in the top lane for yeah. Flyquest. And let's check that gold real quick because he's sitting at, <laughs> isn't that about, uh, let's say, 1600 gold up? Ooh, Balls looking for something. But Dardic actually gets the ulti down. Balls maybe in a one He has a lot two. of damage. He's going to fight his way out. Ult from Nautilus burnt. Balls is like, yeah, come back. Yeah. Dardoch's like, nope, I'm out. Yeah, doesn't want to mess with that. And we'll see. Dardoch half HP, so Moon feels comfortable going in, especially when the mid laners have just cleared everything out. And Balls will have teleport shortly. Oh, hold on. Bottom lane. Looks like some trading. And there goes the hook. There goes Lemonation. Yeah, Lemon back in on the Piglet, actually. Looking for the stun. Charges up the auto. Does get it. Total gets ignited there by Matt. A bit of damage back, not enough to kill him. Yeah, that was well played there from Matt to get the knockup on Wild Turtle then, because Wild Turtle wanted to follow up Elimination's auto attack stun with a trap, which then you can't get out of in time. So the trap came out a quarter second too late because of the knockup from the uh, Power Fist from Blitzcrank. And so Matt prevented some follow up there that would have chunked Piglet out. Yeah, hi. Again, just darting down towards that bot lane. He's done a really good job of effectively roaming this game, which was the thing his Corky was known for. Yes, he is down in CS. Mickey is also playing the lane well and getting down. That even has Swift speed. Yeah, it's Swifty. Just to get there even faster if necessary. And this just seems about that mobility because there aren't really many slows on the team. I would say the Caitlyn net. Otherwise, you're looking at something like Merc Treads that you would want. But it's also not that large team fight impactful ultimate with the shred that you would have from the Sorcerer shoes. So Mickey going for a roaming style here, trying to affect the side lanes. And this is something that I remember talking to Team Liquid and they picked up Golden Glue and Link. And they were saying Golden Glue is just a better laner, and Link is a better person who plays to side lanes and roams. He understands when to. And it looks like Mickey has a little bit of both going for him here at the 10 CS per minute mark, but also is favoring those roams, favoring shoving and going to the side lane. Well, it's definitely a big Drake up for grabs here. FlyQuest still up close to 2,000 gold in this game. But the Infernal Drake is there, so Fly can maybe start a fight for it. Balls is so strong in his 1v1 with the Black Cleaver finished mm -hmm. already. Both top laners can TP, but... Polo is going to struggle in that 1v1 as FlyQuest actually looking to make that space as Balls going to walk down here and start this Drake up nice and early. Yeah, might get TP advantage in top lane too because Lorlo has to shove it out. He has teleport, but if he TPs here, then that means Balls has full priority on the top side of the map for the foreseeable future. I feel like TL instead say shove the lanes, shove bottom, maybe deal damage to this turret or force them off, but definitely don't risk that fight at this point. And Balls Smiley is already back up towards the top side. In fact, he's almost there. As Lolo getting that wave pushed back, but Balls should be able to meet it at the turret. So really effective room by Balls. And just a great team play there for yeah. FlyQuest to get that first trade. And they understand not overkilling things like the objective. If you only need two people to do that dragon and the other team doesn't look like they're contesting because you see them in lanes, then just walk away, have those three people do it, and then the other two can get back to position because it's a game of seconds when minion waves are on the table and Balls being very aggressive with two people missing. Yeah, Lolo's there, but it's actually 1v3. Balls gonna get moved back in, gonna try and take a kill on Lolo. Lots of healing from the Cuba. Dardock able to kill him. Yeah, 
Goes with the Cataclysm for the finishing blow there to save Lorlo, who now gets to kind of get a little bit back in this game. So saving that top laner from falling further down the hole. And this might be that Rift Herald as well, because Maokai on the bottom side. But now, as the bottom lane of Team Liquid, you have to watch out for a four-man dive. You'd be very conscious that that could happen right now. Fate was a little too good there in the top lane. Nice work from Liquid to get a kill, but pressure onto this turret. As Blackbest moved four people down It's going to feel it. really bad if you're Piglet and Matt right now, because you've been doing some good work in this lane, and you almost have the enemy bottom tier one turret down. It's very close to falling, but you're going to have to sacrifice your own because of the map play that's been made by the other team. Might even have to commit the Rift Herald, which TL do just get. We'll see where they look to apply that, as Moon also stealing away this red buff to be able to take it down as he gets the smite. Ah, they actually aren't going to lose their bottom turret there because of the fact that the minion waves weren't stacked enough. Lorlo used the hook balls like, what are you doing? Yep. And then doesn't see this coming. Feels safe, though, because he has a control ward and also the fact that oh, they hadn't really spotted anybody else on the map for a while. You can see it's kind of dark vision across the map. There's only a single ward on the top side for FlyQuest. It's that ward that he has, that control ward on the top side. Kind of left Balls out to dry. There's nothing up there. Yeah, Balls run down for his team. Team responds by not warding the top side. Yeah. Of the I mean, jungle. Uh, Infernal Drake's up, man. All our wards are going there. Fend for yourself. It's kind of the strategy they went for there, or at least the call, was to put your wards on the bottom side, which they knew they would be playing to in the near future because of the Drake. Yeah, not going to deter Balls too much, thankfully. Yeah. For him, he's still 1,500 gold ahead. And two levels up. Yeah, has his team out ready. So uh, Renekton's still on full-on 1v1 side lane mode. See where that next bit of pressure just kind of buckle for either team here. FlyQuest ramping things up. Looking to get that 280 item Caitlyn onto that turret. No major item completed just yet for either AD. Of oh, course. there's a, a flank war. Aggressive teleport elimination is going to catch Matt. Fate's cool. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Beautiful escape. Going to lose the turret though. Yeah, zoning Maokai ultimate is actually incredibly effective, and it is not even a meme zoning ultimate there. It's actually a zoning ultimate that you use with the Nature's Grasp. You throw it out, it'll cover the entire lane if you try to just get those last little bits on the turret. They pick it up, and now they put themselves a little bit further ahead in this game, because FlyQuest with that gold advantage. Race on for topside, Dada gonna channel that Rift Herald after stealing away the red buff, so looks like it'll just be a trade. Dada, pretty inventive use of this buff here. So it can proxy this wave, and yeah, FlyQuest, they're moving up there. I don't think they'll be here fast enough. Cannon Wave plus Rift Tail should be more than enough. Yeah, Ty's got to clear out mid. Nikki's going to dip into Fog of War. And just back there, Ty checks it, make sure that he's not roaming. Saw that he was out of mana, so no way that Mickey would roam to the top side or anything like that. So it goes down. Rift Tail still hanging out, but Paul should chase that down as he cleans up the rest of the wave. Flyquest still up. Again, about not quite 2,000 gold at this point. Invade onto this blue buff here, though, as. Well, Turtle back down to that bottom side again. Getting a lot of sideline priority here from his team as Moon. Oh, maybe caught there. Good hook from Matt. W's back in, but yeah, caught out here. Should go down. Knock up there. Gives Piglet a kill. Dada Kali Oops on Elimination. Lemon has ulti. Doesn't have. Yep, gonna use it now. Flash. Double pole moves him back in, but it's too much damage. Piglet grabs a very critical double kill. Yep, and now they get to look at that mid lane turret and try to take that away from high as Wild Turtle pushes the bottom side of the map. Trying to get something here. I mean, Piglet has four kills. He was able to kind of cash in on a call and not get punished. And so Piglet's actually sitting with a lot of gold right now. Actually the most gold in the game and 6,700. Balls is second highest with 6,500. But right now he's 1,100 over Turtle. We're in a very similar place to where we were last time. Wild Turtle can out. Another great hook from Matt. That's going to be ultimate committed as well for just some burst damage. And that should be a kill. Dardock gets yet another yeah. hunt down Wild Turtle. Wild Turtle was shoving there, and his 90 caliber net, after he was shoving and used that last Q to shove the wave, didn't have any mana to actually use the 90 caliber Ooh, net. Ooh, hi though, forcing a flash. Really nice 1v1 there. Gonna get Mickey's ultimate out of it as well, so high with some additional pressure. Yeah, and he'll get this turret if he wants to pressure it. He's got balls on the top side. Dardock's gonna walk up. He's got the Trinity for it. Ooh, oh, another one. Another, it's Piglet actually farming too far forward. Fade's called, not gonna save you. And it's gonna actually throw Matt in. To the wolves! All right, he's got flash, gets slowed there by the Bramble Smash. Good flash there from Matt over the wall to get himself out. But FlyQuest going to clear out some vision, going to take this mid turret, and guess what's back up in 40 seconds? Infernal Drake number two. Yeah, Infernal Drake, FlyQuest got the first one. And they'll be in a really great spot if they're able to pick up that second one here. It'll help out the Renekton on top of it too, who's been a split push beast so far. You know, if you want to keep Lorlo in that side lane as well as the Nautilus who really wants to look for those team fights, it's definitely ideal. It's going to have to build some magic resist too, because now you have high with magic penetration. 
He's also got himself the Trinity Force, so if he actually hits that Nautilus, he's going to be doing a decent amount of damage at this point. And that's just a snap engage there for Elimination. And these are two tanks on the AD carry, just throwing so much CC. Piglet barely gets to use his Martial Poise at all. Pops the ultimate there to try and escape, but the heal also blown on top of it. And they got the flash from Matt, so no, no big combos coming out for a bit here. A bit of a bonus there. Yeah, and that's great to get right before the dragon comes up, because you didn't have to use summoner spells for that, except for maybe the ignite. But Lemonation's look at this. In again. Hook not going to land onto turtle as Lemonation pops the ultimate, tanks up a lot of damage there on the front line, but. Piglet finally going to join the team for this team fight here. FlyQuest do have to find the right angle for this fight. And FlyQuest are actually giving up mid-priority very heavily. They just had a whole minion wave die to the turret because they were looking for a fight there. And now Mickey's just going to push, farm. They don't want to get caught here, though. They have vision that the Drake has been started. They don't have vision on the side oh, here. As no. soon as somebody walks by. Great flank there. High moves for Elimination by the double knock up. The Reno to Lolo is high to the back line, but a lot of damage there. As the Polarize is going to come out. Dada melting low as Moon finally takes him down. Mickey. Shockwave, that was the burst damage that started off, but a one for zero there, FlyQuest winning a team fight. Yeah, it's the burst damage that started off, but he doesn't have the penetration, he has the Swifty Boots, but FlyQuest right now on top of the Infernal Drake after picking up Lorlo, who, like I said, is not actually very tanky at this point. He's got no magic resistance, and so Corky does so much damage to him. I would even say the Maokai does a lot of damage to him at this point, too. Big bouncy castle of a team fight, but FlyQuest win it, get one kill, and do take the second Infernal Drake away. I mean, kind of look at the investment they've got in these types of carries on Corky, on Caitlyn for High and Wild Turtle. They're going to be very happy to have that scaling Drake, because this was such a nice trap set by FlyQuest. Yeah, Elimination's going to actually head up Pulverize 2 and Lorlo and Dardock, and now the calls go on Lorlo. And you can see just the damage there, a high is able to deal. Even though they try to turn it around, Lorlo already got chunked out and just these barrages that are being thrown in there and wild turtles damage to boot. And it's just a lot and balls just in the thick of things. Like pretty much all the damage dealers of FlyQuest were able to contribute in very meaningful ways in that fight. Whereas TL were still kind of figuring out how to trickle in, didn't have Fate's Call. The Shockwave wasn't as effective as they would have liked it to be. And so we're still struggling in these fights now. And it's only a 1.5K gold lead though. Yep. But FlyQuest do have the double Infernal. So it's something to kind of track in terms of invisible gold. And I, th I think this is a very similar situation to the last game, really. Two good carries total on a good late game carry high on Corky, who also scales nicely, and just kind of patiently playing through this mid game, very calm. Uh, really a fly quest I haven't seen kind of at all this split so far. So impressed with the composure they're playing with. I think they're just, again, picking themselves very simple comps. We criticized their drafts a lot in recent weeks, and now Moon and Balls are both willing to play Maokai, and they picked it early in the draft. Like, a lot of little adjustments are adding up here for me. And even Wild Turtle being in a side lane, but FlyQuest kind of guiding him to safety and giving opportunities to get stronger. He was behind again in this game, and I think it's caught up well. So Fly just kind of sticking to a simple game plan, but executing very effectively. So far, like you said, simple game plans have been the name of the game here, where it's really easy for them to just continue doing what they're doing. Uh, but they're going to have to kind of accelerate the pace of the game at some point. I feel like these Oriana Shockwaves get very deadly, and then the Blitzcrank is always that thing in the back of your head that you have to watch out for, because one Blitzcrank hook can make the difference if it's on high, or if it's on Wild Turtle. Even later on, like, Balls may be able to take a hook for a bit, but it looks like his build is going a uh, semi-tanky route, but we're not talking about Titanic Hydra into... Uh, Gargoyle Stone play. This looks like uh, Randuin's Omen. Could be a Dead Man's Plate. I expect the Randuins personally, mm -hmm. just so you can slow down the Callista. Makes sense. And I think Balls, again, throws a lot of good side lane pressure, but will not be nearly the same tank that he was in the last game with Maokai. So we'll have to see just how much room Balls can kind of create and what damage he can do in these side lanes, because he's still very far ahead of Lolo in total gold CS and, and overall pressure. But FlyQuest, still playing it patiently. I think they know that uh, Caitlyn wants to get to those three items, get the Static Shift, get the Infinity Edge, and the Rapid Fire Cannon. And you kind of need one more on top of that, either a QSS or probably in this game, given the tank, some sort of Last Whisper upgrade. So FlyQuest just going to play it patient, make sure Turtle gets the majority of the farm in this game. And if they can keep this lead or even maybe get a couple kills here and there and make sure they get the objectives. FlyQuest have a very clear avenue to win this game. They just need to get there safely. Yeah, and FlyQuest pretty much at all stages aren't really out of this game either because the fact that the Corky does so much magic damage with those crits later. And Wild Turtle, I mean, is Caitlyn, I'm looking right now on Leapedia, 31 wins, 5 losses. 
one of his highest win rate champions ever in his career. Another great hook though from Matt's gonna start to kill onto high, but he's actually relatively tanky. It was a Blitzcrank and a Java uh, that tried that as the ultimate. He's gonna actually find Lolo, who's now on the front line, gonna try and get something done, but he gets done and taken down by Ball. Now it's a 5v4. Lolo? <laughs> he completes his teleport there. Piglet's not in position. The rest of the team isn't in position. Uh, that's a, a sacrifice there for no reason. You which, don't have to complete that. Yep, yeah, which is uh, net negative as far <laughs> as the play goes. Well, Flacco's actually just going to return back to their same lane assignments, it looks like. Balls back down to that bottom side, going to keep the turret up. Does have his teleport. He didn't use it again. Balls has been really good at walking to engagements most of the time and maintaining his side lane advantage. And you can see just how quickly he melts these... Minion waves. Lola's going to be back in a couple seconds, but again, FlyQuest just get their kill, react to Team Liquid's play, and then go back to those same land assignments. Wild Turtle is already back into that top lane, continuing to get farm. Yep, Wild Turtle just shoving it out. And like I said, very high win rate. His highest win rate champion in his career, aside from a few that he's played only three times. This one, mm, check in the back. Very good for him. Can't get in though. I think they might be still on it here. Hard to say, of course. FlyQuest can't see, so. They don't know. We don't know. They're yep. still on it. TL. They don't. Oh, wait, what? That, that was a smite. They're giving it over yeah, to Piglet. He's really going to try to rend. Commit. Fates call Burnt Turtle trying to find the flame, but Matt actually has found a Mickey with the shock wave and the rend. Does get it down. They got there. Turtle. Kills. Turtle does fall a high. And should take out Piglet. TL just have to book it. Try and save as many lives as they can. Oh, oh it's actually back. It was a Mickey with the Baron empowered. Recall is going to keep him safe. Only one. Nice, aggressive Baron from Team Liquid. Well, they traded one for one as well. They got Wild Turtle for Piglet, and they were trying their damnedest to kill Piglet to make sure he can't get the rend off in time. He gets it at 300 HP after Moon went for his own smite. But that was just a burst down. Really hard forest bear in there for TL to try and get back in this game to overcome the gold deficit, but also the two Infernal Drakes there from FlyQuest. He's gonna even up some turrets here as well. Three to two as this mid lane turret's gonna fall. Lolo again. The target, but his ultimate will help disengage and FlyQuest push will be called off here in that top side because TL are still pushing with Baron, don't forget, here yep. in the mid lane. Yeah, and they're gonna keep pushing right now. Wild Turtle, level 12, doesn't have the traps fully maxed just yet. The four points in it, that's gonna be that tier two. And there's turrets for them to take still. Ocean Drake is up, bottom tier one is still up and very close to going down. Remember, TL had a large advantage in that bottom lane and then had it kind of taken away from them because of the fact that the top side of the map was where they were making plays. Yeah, Turtle's still playing catch up here. So he's going to need to keep moving towards those major items. But Fly back in on the Drake should have an advantage there. But we'll see this Baron attempt once again. Yep, just deny vision over and over and over again. And FlyQuest, I mean, they're kind of getting the high Baron play on high. And so right now, the Smite came through very early. Smite's going to come through now from Moon down to 300. And then the Ren came through right then on the side, Wild Turtle had already had to get out of the pit, and then he got hooked there, and Dardock is like, let's go. Yep, again, to kill Turtle, <laughs> crediting his new mid laner, with a nice little play. I like how he's all, uh, you know, he's all smiles there. When the jungler doesn't get flamed for smites, he's like, yeah, it would be Piglet's fault this time. <laughs> That's the win-win situation as a jungler. It's the Callista's fault. Yeah, I didn't even have smite up. <laughs> to Moon's credit, I think he was just trying to guess there. Wasn't really like just like oh, yeah, hoping you, Piglet would You run. have to, you have to. So yeah. That, so that makes sense. Might look like kind of a random smite from Moon, but trying his best to, I guess, read Piglet's mind there, but unsuccessful. Baron goes mm -hmm. over to TL and they pick up a lot of turrets off of that. Now four to three in turrets. They take three already with that Baron and have a minute and a half of it left. FlyQuest. Now they're the ones that are playing from behind, but only a thousand gold so far for Team Liquid, but this will be a nice Baron power play for them to exactly. get them back into the game. It's already swung at about, I would believe, 3,000 gold. So already getting them back in that driver's seat. Still have the bottom turret to take as well, so that's another thousand waiting to be picked up. So they're looking pretty good so far. Righteous Glory completed. Locket also completed here from Dardock. Nations caught out, doesn't have a flash. Does have an They'd ultimate, going to burn it, but high. Oh! oh good double shockwave there from Mickey. And that's high going down. Dardock going to kill him for his fates. Call is going to knock up Lemon Nation. He's going to fall as well as Piglet gets his fifth kill. That was such an interesting shockwave as well from Mickey, because he was looking for just high, and then Lemon Nation threw himself into it. So was kind of predicting that there would be the backup there. And then he ends up landing a great one. So this is a much better game so far from the new mid laner here from Team Liquid, who's also been farming incredibly well too. Yep, looking good so far. Kind of Ariana with three items is where you want to be. Yeah, the three item spike, when you get that Void Staff, 
I don't, I don't really care if you have like Morellos and then whatever you want on top of it, even Banshee's Veil. As long as you get that Void Staff, that's the big power spike for the Orianas when she gets that penetration. Yeah, and you can see TL gonna take a mid inhibitor off of this as well. FlyQuest just couldn't quite get their carries in the right position this time. Turtle just kind of lacking behind in gold, and Corky's items are very expensive, mm -hmm. so the investment not paying off just yet for FlyQuest. TL kind of poised to take over this game with the next possible push. Yeah, and right here, they catch on Lemonation, who's backing in a uh, pretty suspect spot. They ward over, they catch him, and then High goes in, gets knocked up, and then it's the Shockwave onto two there, which ends up netting them both kills. And Fly, uh, High had Flash there, so if he hadn't been knocked up by Matt in that moment, he would have flashed away from the Shockwave. But that's just the CC layering. You're hit by one, you're gonna get hit by another. So Mickey was very quick to hit that Shockwave button. It's certainly looking good here for Team Liquid as Another Infernal Drake is actually coming up next. I'm not sure if it'll see the light of day here in this game. And I don't think that FlyQuest will get it even if it does. So TL going to move back towards that top side. Going to try and clear out some space. And yeah, pretty insane Baron Power mm -hmm. play. 6,500 gold or so. Yeah. And that's exactly what they needed as well. Because if you look at the gold now, they're 4,000 up. They're 2,000 down right before that. They're 3,000 up right now. So yeah. Down a decent amount. But we're able to kind of reclaim those turrets... Now we're taken from them very early on in the side lanes. And now they get to push up. They have that inhibitor down, which is kind of the goal whenever you get a Baron, aside from like killing the Nexus with it, you do at least want to get an inhibitor, right? You, it's kind of the gold standard for that was a mm. good Baron power play. And that was a good Baron power play. Team Liquid just trying to put the last finishing touches here on this game and pushing it to game number three. Turtle still farming up needs a little bit more. Yeah, this, this isn't yeah, over. It's a lot more, actually. <laughs> this ain't over yet. We're seeing like... Gold advantages pretty much across the board, except for Balls in the top lane, who is up over his opponent. But TL, they have the pick potential. They have good team fight. And they have the gold exactly where they need it. Whereas FlyQuest, they have catching up to do. But then it's on TL, this team that's shown that you know, closing games has not been their forte. We're going to get poked. Tata canceling a back for each cheeky. Do we have enough marksmen to clear this out? Mickey and Lolo, though, 2v1 against Balls. Huge amount of damage they've done to Renekton, so Tower's going to be under threat. Baron has dropped off, but it's back up in 55 seconds, and that Drake will respawn in a minute 30, so... Yeah. And, and I like that they put Mickey up against Balls there for a moment, because Balls has no magic resistance aside from his Merc Treads, and that's it. So, able to shred through that. And look for another big ticket item here. Assume that it's going to be the Death Cap from Mickey. There's his fourth completed item. Yep. Turtle also has third items now, but does need... I think at least Last Whisper to be truly team fight impactful at this point. We're also looking at High to complete his third item as well. Should be that rapid fire cannon. But FlyQuest may be thinking they want to start a fight now. Well, it's very aggressive. The fact that High has a an Elixir of Wrath means that they are probably looking for something right as that Infernal Drake is coming up. If you can get that Infernal Drake, they'll be in a good spot elimination. Oh, Matt actually right a little too far forward. Good ult there from Malka as the Fates Goal pulls Matt to safety. There's TP? Cancelled. No root. Actually, just barely hits Matt, but no follow-up on the team fight there for FlyQuest. Big cooldown burnt there. Yeah, Baron's on the table. There are so many control wards in the inventory of FlyQuest, and there aren't any to place down from TL. So theirs are getting cleared out right now. And that leaves an open dragon. The Infernal would be the third one for FlyQuest. And High goes for the package. Whoa, Look at for Mickey. Mickey! But he flashes out of the way. High packaged in. And now Elimination caught on the front side. Ultimate's going to wear off soon enough. And that, That's going to force Mickey back, though. He's out of mana. And he's also out of almost to HP here. You, you need a Morello uh, kill and a reset to really be effective in this fight. He has the Shockwave. He's going to have to make it count. There's the TP from Lolo. Yeah, this is very bold for FlyQuest. I think maybe hoping for another pick, but they'll get the TP at least. Lolo forced off the bot side. Now Fly have to retreat, but they're into the waiting arms of Lolo Turtle. They got to kill him get fast. Up there. They do need to kill him, but I'm not sure he's going to go down that quickly. Moon zoning off as Lolo flashes into the back of the Baron pit. And now it was about getting summoner spells and buying time because bottom tier two goes down. FlyQuest also have this gigantic wave that was crashing into their top turret. So their top inhibitor turret also took some damage there. Trying to kind of panic them with minion waves. So TL with the side lane control. Oh, and Lemon again. Back uh, on to Mickey, but yeah, he's alone. Yeah, and there's no ulti on Lemonation or Flash. So if he makes a mistake here, then he's just going to get blown up. Yeah, he'll die real quick. Yeah. With all this damage on TL. As Fly do actually get control back over the Baron area. I wonder if they dare to sneak in that Drake. 
It doesn't look like it. Turtle able to play up an aggressive. Oh, yeah, that was a net forward from Turtle. I'm like, ah! If a hook lands, yeah, there's a hook. Go. It's on the balls. Matt looking for another angle. Does hit on the high. Oh, oh he got his knockback as well, but the shock wave not enough as Dark tries to get the oh. lead. Another big knockback and fly cross. And they're doing a massive team by Batil. Their carries will stay alive. High is up for a little while. Moon. Longer, but Moon, he's so tanky in that front side. Lolo finally goes down. What a mess. Two for two. And they don't kill Matt at the end either. So yeah, two for two at the end of it all. But the carries stay up for FlyQuest and Team Liquid. But that's going to be FlyQuest with the inside track on this Infernal. They'll get their third one here. Not enough health left for Team Liquid's carries. Moon did so much work in the back line as FlyQuest will get Infernal number three. Yeah, Moon jumping into the back line is huge here. He actually disrupts three people alongside Lemonation. Lemonation's headbutt pulverize where he's zoning here. He waits, sees the opportunity, headbutt pulverizes, and it stops the Blitzcrank from flying in because the Fates Call stops on the first person, and now they're putting Thread on. Balls ends up dropping there as well to Piglet, and Moon almost picking up Mickey, almost picking up Piglet, but Lorlo was kind of the trade back there, as well as Dardock, who were trying to threaten. That was the backliners diving. When they'll dive situations, it's whoever can kill the tanks faster. And I will put money often on Corky and Caitlyn being able to do that. I mean, you can see just the total amount of damage done by both sides there in that fight. But we have been looking for kind of that pivotal moment for FlyQuest carries. And we're kind of at that point right now. Last Whisper, done for Turtle. High, three items also completed as he has Infinity Hedge completed. Yeah, and so I was just talking about how when you have two teams that have people diving each other's back lines, it's who's ever front line inside of their divers. Whoever's divers live longer will usually win the team fight and give them a chance to regroup. Dardock has just completed his Gargoyle Stone Plate. This will drastically increase the time that he can stay alive and could be the difference here. Moon actually caught oh a huge amount of damage. Almost Moon dead. with the ultimate, but he gets a lot of shields there. Ultimate still moving through his piglet's locked up forever. High. He's going to eat the depth charges. They try to get the hook back in him with the face cover. They High? go back in with the knockup damage. is still there aside. Oh, Mickey! Finally, Mickey! Dies. Mickey in the backside is balls able to kill him as he dives straight through the rest of Team Liquid. Piglet, though, still outputting damage. Lola needs to live a little while longer than Turtle. He's got a hook. Piglet flashes forward. Team Liquid should be to sweep the fight, there's the kills. Piglet getting everything else, and that's an ace for Team Liquid. And that'll be game. Matt with the poles in the fight. He got wild, or he got wild turtle at the end of it, but he also got high at the very beginning, locking him up and stopping him from getting away with a Valkyrie or anything else they wanted to use there. Well, Team Liquid gonna knock down this in hip for one last time in this game. 20 seconds on FlyQuest or thereabouts. They're going to yeah. go for it. They have Piglet. They have a lot of damage on these turrets. The minion wave is going to show up now, so they'll drop that backdoor bonus. It would have to be high with a Miracle Blade, but this is going down so fast, and Dardock will give extra attack speed to them. High may be able to get in here. This would be very close, but they're saying, they screw it. They have to kill Piglet. They have to kill Piglet. High. He knows that they're going to go in for it. Oh, the crit's right Oh, my God. Lemonation. A three-man knockout. FlyQuest will save the game. High with a triple kill. And they make a lot me too because here comes the tp to the bottom side is this the opposite mickey's gonna shockwave to clear the wave and take the threat off they were going for broke it looked like one of those calls that even i said it it was over but high high and flyquest say uh-uh more game to play high leans back in his chair after that as well he knew what he needed yeah. to get done to keep this game up and this was so close yeah i think he grabs the package here too as soon as he spawns he takes the time to grab it so he can use it goes over to piglet Knocks him to the side, and then right there, the flag of drag went over, but High ends up with enough damage, and the triple kill, and the call on Baron, and FlyQuest are back in it. They got Baron, I think it's time to go for the throat. FlyQuest know that their time is now still too dead for TL, as Dardic and Piglet are respawning. FlyQuest can do so much damage here. If TL make a mistake, the game could end. Yeah, and man, that was so close to being over as well. The Nexus was under threat, and they're going to come going, back. Let it go. Lemonation goes in, looks for the front line. Everybody diving in. But the damage is matched from the Death Charge. Mickey with a decent shock wave. Turtle dead. Down, the turtle somehow dies in and amongst the mess. Piglet able to take him down. They need to kill Piglet as high. They can't kill him. firing away, but it's not enough. Matt, he's looking to go down here, but the stun should be enough. Root lands in. Lola doesn't land the hook. It's actually a little bit of terrain, but Piglet already got the triple. Dardock should be able to lock this down high. He's got nothing left. The ace happens again. <laughs> and Team Luke are going to do it right this time. I don't know if it's game yet, Pastry. I don't want to say it because last time I was wrong, but this time 
It looks like it's for I sure. I think you're safe this time. 30 <laughs> seconds on FlyQuest, and the Nexus is open. That in here will not respawn for a number of minutes, so that's going to take a victory march straight down the mid lane. And it'll look like Game 3 is on the docket up next, because TL, they never said die in that game, and they just kept going. They tried to go for broke, didn't work. Do it the second time. And Mickey with a shockwave. Liquid hold on to their chances of staying in the safety spots. Lolo! <laughs> that's not even the person out of his chair. That's not even the person next to him. Usually you see, yeah man, I got you, jungler, let's go. That was support. He, he ran, ran across all the way down to Matt. That's the top lane roam to the support. But Matt played that like a monster. His hooks onto Wild Turtle and onto High in these fights were insane. And in that last that last skirmish, I believe he got another set of really good hooks there to set his team up. Well, we'll have the pleasure of breaking down this game here as we move ourselves out of game two and into eventually a game three. But I think Flyquest, again, they came in with the same plan and just couldn't execute quite as well. Liquid's pressure was much better this time. Yeah, they were much better at kind of pushing what they had. Piglet had a lead. He ends the game 12, 3, and 6, able to keep him much safer and stopping that snowball from happening on the other side with the Caitlyn. They never let the Caitlyn get ahead, and it was really kind of controlling that Renekton in the top side, who had so much farm and got that first turret, if we remember. Yeah, it just felt like Flyquist, again, felt comfortable, but maybe a bit too comfortable, to be honest, moving in to the later stages of that game. Yes, Turtle was getting farm, but T.O. like, our comp is better right now. We can keep applying pressure. Yeah. It's kind of the awkward thing that happened there, but we will have a look at the bottom lane here, a replay at seven minutes in. Team Liquid, you talked about it, the bottom lane did so much work in this game. Well, that's one of the early moments here. Yeah, and this is where High is like roaming down. This is where Matt kind of overextends as well. They try to get Wild Turtle, who's just baiting in, buying time for High to roam down, because that ward is not inside of the tri brush. It doesn't see High coming up, and then they'll see him here, and Piglet's like, wait, I don't have any minions to hop and skip around, so I have to kind of kite backwards. They go after Matt, there's no level six yet for Piglet. They get him with that rocket and then the ignite. And then they try to turn there onto Piglet. But then it was, <laughs> you turned this one around. They turn around the turn around with Mickey coming in, who will get that two-man shockwave that's avoided by High just barely. And then they'll pick up both High and Lemonation here as Wild Turtle just barely gets away when just an auto attack left. And that was pretty much the thing that catapulted Piglet up into this game. Two kills there for him. He picks up both of them. And from there, he just was Callista that was yeah. ahead and stayed ahead. And he had a cull at the time as well. You think back, and he was trying to kind of further that lead. And when you buy a cull on a champion like Callista very early on for the on-hit damage or the on-hit heal, you're saying, all right, I'm better than this guy in lane, and that's where I need to buy my advantage because his team is going to prop him up. So you're trying to kind of cash in on the fact that this guy's not going to punish you in lane. And they had pressure with the Blitzcrank, and that is something that I have to highlight here is that Matt played out of his mind for the whole game. Yep, certainly did. But FlyQuest... Made them work for it. We'll have a look at another replay. It's not the final moment, but it's very close to yeah. FlyQuest somehow defend this. And this is the Callista just not having enough damage to kill structures fast enough. And they have the jungler who's built full tank, and they have the support here, same boat. And so it's up to Piglet, and High knows that. Gets a crit, Valkyrie's forward after the package, gets another crit, and that's three there in terms of his crit that he landed back to back to back with the Trinity Force empowered ones in there too. And you wonder what could have been if FlyQuest played a little more slowly, but it was not to be as Liquid do find the last few moments. And that jump there in gold, that's the Baron. That's Team Liquid pulling a high Baron on high, and they did it in the first game, and they have been loving this objective. I feel like you cannot leave that Baron unwarded against this team because they are showing they have nothing to lose and everything to gain yep. by trying that Baron. Turns out it's a lot easier when you have a Callista on your team. The teams are all tied up here. So meet us back here for the conclusion of FlyQuest versus Team Liquid right after the break. What the hell is this, dude? Yeah, it's one of the 80s.